What is up guys, Corey Smith here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you face tracking on the Osmo Pocket, and then I'm going to be trying active track on this. Alright, so this first mode is called face tracking, and the easiest way to activate it is to simply press the turn around button on the phone or the Osmo, and as soon as the camera turns around you can see it starts tracking my face. Now if face tracking loses track of you, all you have to do is draw a box over your face using your phone, or if it's not connected to your phone, you can simply double tap on the DJI Osmo screen, just double tap on your face and it will start tracking again. To use active track, I'm just going to turn the camera around again, and just like the face tracking, if I drag a box over something, it will start tracking it. Now if you want to track something that's farther away, all you have to do is just draw a bigger box. Now one thing you should know about the tracking is that it doesn't work in all of the frame rates. It doesn't work at 60 frames per second and 50 frames per second. However, if you want to record at 24 frames per second, 25, 30, and even 48 frames per second, face tracking and active track work perfectly. All right, so now I'm going to go for the big test here. You can see I still have my helicopter over here, and I'm going to attempt to draw a box around the helicopter, take off, and start flying, and we'll see if it starts tracking. Most likely, it probably will lose track. I'm going to start off slow and see how it goes from there. All right, so we are ready to start testing. Uh, I'm hoping that this goes well. I actually haven't flown this thing in probably six months or more. So first I'm going to draw a box around the helicopter and start the motors up. So far it appears to be tracking. Alright guys, so it seems like the Osmo actually did pretty well considering what it is and what it's for. What the heck is that? Bug just came up and whacked me in the head. But yeah, the Osmo does pretty well for what it is and I think for most applications it will track just fine. Obviously if you're doing something like flying a helicopter or trying to drag a tiny little drone it's not going to do that. But for general tracking purposes it works really well and it's a really cool feature to try using. So that's it for this video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss more. Also leave comments on here letting me know what you'd like to see in the next video. All the comments you guys have been leaving on the other videos have been really helpful and really nice, so thanks for that. And I will see you in the next one.